Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's independent media production. Today, we're talking about modding affordable bass drum pedals, something that I love to do. In college, my first really nice double bass pedal that I spent a bunch of money on ended up getting stolen from a gig. And I said to myself, self, I'm going to figure out if I can get the job done with things where if something happened to it, I could either get another one quickly or at the very least, the money I would be out wouldn't be heartbreaking, which led me along with technique and things and you know stuff I was trying out to starting to use these affordable sort of entry level Yamaha bass drum pedals that I've been using for years. They're my favorite. Um, they're basically on every gig that I do. Now, having said that, when you're buying pedals that are super affordable, there are of course going to be little sort of cost cutting moments, little things that they do to them to make it so that they can charge that little for that pedal that we as drummers who, you know, want things to work efficiently and be maybe faster and louder and things like that, we can adjust on our own and sort of turn it into a little bit more hot rotted of a thing without breaking the bank. Today we're going to be <laughs> bringing out my old seen a lot of action pedal um, along with a brand new one that has actually not been played. We got it. It's brand spanking new and it still has, you know, like the plastic on the footboard. It's it's never been on a drum and go through some of the things that I do to these pedals to make them into the sort of, you know, thing that I want them to be. When we're talking about hot rodding pieces of gear, what we're really talking about is the weak points in the sort of functionality of that thing. There might be one, there might be many, and there might be some that we can't actually do anything about. The cool thing about bass drum pedals is there are a lot of small components that are actually pretty easy to take off, to adjust, to modify, to swap out, and a lot of them are also fairly like similar from brand to brand, and today we're actually going to be crossing brands with some of this stuff too. Here's the brand new one that we're using today. These sell for roughly 70 bucks. I usually get them used on eBay or Reverb for even less than that. The last one I bought, I think I paid $25 for it. And I love them because I've never broken one. They do the job. They have a slightly longer footboard than a lot of ones out there. And I like to have that for some of the heel toe things and things like that. And everything that I would want to modify is readily accessible and fits with other parts that I can get very inexpensively. Now with this brand new version of the pedal that I've been using for years, the first thing that I want to do is talk about the rocker hub, the bearing that's right here, or in the case of a brand new one, the lack of a bearing right here. Now we need smoothness out of the pedal, we want speed, we want it to get away from the head quickly, we want it to be usable for fast doubles and all those kinds of things, and this is the spot where we might think we need to change spring tension or some other adjustment, but there's actually a modification here that I want to do, I've done it to my personal pedals for years, and it is to actually change out this part right here. Now, if we remove this, there's no bearing in here. This is just plastic on metal with a little bit of lubrication, which, frankly speaking, uh, it makes for a slow feeling pedal. It makes for kind of a, a bummer of a response out of the pedal when you're trying to do things articulately and do things with a lot of dynamics. Additionally, since there's no bearings in there over time, this is probably going to wear through. I've actually had that happen and then just kind of split in the center, which is a awful thing to have happen on a gig to go from virtually no smoothness to just metal on metal and nothing at all. All we need to know to see sort of the proof in the pudding here is if I do this, it's already over with. If I switch to my personal pedal, you can see it's seen some things. It's banged up. It's been to a lot of countries, a lot of places. Uh, this is a DW Rocker Hub bearing that I bought online for $6, and this is the same spring tension. This is the same, basically, everything in that little structure, same spring. And I've never lubricated this bearing, I've never changed it, never adjusted it. It feels like a pedal that costs three times as much money, and all it was was changing out that bearing. We try to get as little extra noise coming out of pedals as possible. The spring can be a culprit. Depending on the tension of the spring, depending on you know the nature of the pedal, it can make noise. This one is actually audible. It sounds like you know a spring.
The simple solution to this, and some companies do do something like this, but if you're buying a pedal that's like 60 bucks like these are, um, you have to do it yourself. And it is, I get a foam earplug and I just kind of shove it into the spring to alleviate this extra kind of racket that can come through and occasionally actually be audible in microphones. If you look at my old pedal and look real closely in the spring, you can see that there's an earplug shoved in there. It's been in there forever and it does the job. In my old pedal, we can hear what this modification ends up sounding like. This is right along the same lines of putting cotton balls or felt or something inside of vintage drum lugs because some older drums, when you hit them, you can actually hear this kind of chorus of ringing noise out of the drum that's very metallic and kind of sounds like strings or something like that. And it took me a long time to figure out what it even was, but eventually somebody pointed out that I'm hitting a thing that's full of springs that have nothing in them to keep them from doing that and I'm making it resonate. So obviously they're gonna zing a lot. Crucial modification number three to think about is the beater. Now we've talked about beaters, we've talked about sound of beaters and feel and different things like that, but what I specifically wanted to mention here is that just because a beater comes with the pedal you bought doesn't mean that that's the right beater for that pedal. Now for instance, the beater that comes with these Yamaha pedals felt simple, totally works. It's very lightweight. Now I like this style of beater. I prefer a Danmar. I've been using these for years. I think this is probably my fifth one that I've been using in my life. Um, significantly heavier, rounded a little bit. Overall, just a different kind of feel. I like this in any pedal that I put it in, so I just I know that this is part of the ingredients for the feel that I'm looking for. When they put beaters in a pedal, it's not necessarily because it's the best beater or the best beater for that pedal. It has much more to do with production, cost saving, innovation of design or appearance, lots of different things that have not a whole lot to do with whether or not that is even married to that pedal in a way that's most effective. As a for instance, the first thing I did when I got my DW5000s back in the day was try out other beaters because I was surprised at how heavy those stock ones are. They're great for certain things. They weren't great for what I was doing at the time. So just like you know the bearings and the springs and everything else, just because it showed up that way doesn't mean that it's necessarily what you need. In the same way that the drum heads that come on your kit when you buy it, you know, they could be great, they could be the worst. The thing about the beaters too is that it really does impact the sound and behavior of the drum that you're hitting with the heads that you choose and everything else. There's lots of adjustments in the beater. We've talked about that in previous videos as well. But the bottom line is we want to do things to these pedals, hacks, options that aren't terribly expensive and that will last for a while. And all of the things we're talking about here are generally speaking like a do it once and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now the final thing with sort of hot rodding uh, affordable pedals and you know not having to deal with things that are a lot more money than this is something I discovered very early on um, playing backline kits is that the hoops on different bass drums, vintage, new, different brands, they're all a little bit variable in thickness. And I discovered um, with these pedals that I love so much that some older drums, some drums that were just worn down, the clamp actually couldn't clamp onto the hoop because the hoop had thinned so much. And I thought to myself, there's gotta be a way to fix this that stays with the pedal and that I don't have to do every single time I go to a venue and discover that the drums are in a state of disrepair or that the brand doesn't really match up with what the clamp is expecting. The screws on here eventually bottom out as you get too fully closed. And if this is not enough, if you're out of slack on there and it's not grabbing on to the hoop, we need a little more something underneath the screw to give it a little more push and change the geometry of the clamp a little bit. The very DIY solution I came up with on my personal pedal here is that I Velcroed a coin underneath the screw behind there, which basically just changed what the bottoming out clamp amount was of the screw. I looked for longer screws, I looked for different screws, I couldn't find anything that was threaded exactly right. So that kind of meant that I had to find my own way. Um, I have another couple of these pedals that I use for traveling and things like that. I've glued things under there, done different things because I did run into that from time to time. And you know, depending on the design of the pedal, this might be a thing that actually saves you a lot of grief if you are going between backline kits but you wanna bring your personal pedal and know that it's gonna work with no problems.
All right, that about wraps it up. Thanks for coming along on this journey. Please like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you hear about all of our new videos. We are officially in season four and loving it. We have a unbelievable shoot schedule that I am super excited and mildly stressed out about. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be super fabulous. Um, and incidentally, if you are on our Patreon, and if you're not, please go check it out. If you are on our Patreon, there's gonna be a relatively long-winded uh, anecdote about my history with all the different bass drum pedals that I've ever had on there because I've had a lot of them and people are often surprised that I ended up with like the cheapest one that Yamaha makes, but I tell you it is the best of all the things that I've tried um, and there's been a lot. Lastly, please, please, please tell us any experiences you have with modding bass drum pedals and also just because we're curious what your favorite is that you ended up with. Is it the most expensive one? Is it the cheapest one? Do you still use a Speed King? What's the vibe and why did you do it? <laughs>